If you want some absolutely classic vintage blues bass riffs that would be perfect for playing at like a blues jam session, then check this video out. I've got five of them to show you in five different situations, so no matter who you're playing with, you should be good to go. <laughs> Welcome to Become a Bassist, where it's all about insanely practical, no BS bass lessons designed to get you playing better bass, having more fun, and becoming the best bassist that you can be. And today, it's all about the blues. Now, if you've ever been to a blues jam session and either, you know, maybe been too intimidated to get up and have a play, or maybe you did get up but, you know, bombed a little bit, I've got some ready to go riffs that you can just put in your arsenal and pull them out whenever you need them. First is an absolute classic blues riff. Uh, probably made famous most by Muddy Waters, and you can find it in songs like Hoochie Coochie Man, as well as Etta James's version of I Just Want to Make Love to You. I'm not 100% sure who came up with the riff, although my money is on Willie Dixon because he wrote both those tunes. But I'm not sure, I'm not like 100% sure. So if you do know, write it in the comments. I'd be super curious to find out if there's any earlier um, kind of versions of this riff. But the riff goes like this. Let's play this one in the key of G, which means the riff is going to sound like this. Two, three. Uh, uh. Halfway. Two, three. Uh, uh. Two, three. And here we go to the four chord. Now you've probably heard this before, right? It's super, super common. Uh, this riff, it'll usually be like uh, played by basically everyone. Guitars, keys, harmonica, uh, anyone in the band that can jump on that riff, they probably will. Even the jums, uh, drums will jump on that rhythm. Uh, and in the space uh, between those lines, that's usually where the vocal goes. So, uh, vocal line there, and vocals there. You get the idea, it's like kind of a call and response kind of thing. Uh, now as far as how to play it, it's super super simple. Uh, we're in the key of G right now and we just have three notes. We have this D, fifth fret of the A string right here, this F, third fret of the D string, and the G, fifth fret of the D string. And we just go D, F, D, F, G the whole time. Now what happens in the rest of the song? Uh, well in songs like Hoochie Coochie Man, uh, the Muddy Waters song, that riff gets played eight times over eight bars like we just did with the track before. And then we go to the four chord and from there it's just the last eight bars of a blues. Uh, and over that last eight bars you can use any of the kind of authentic blues bass lines from another video of mine. I'll put a link in the description for you to check out uh, also in the top, uh, top right hand corner. But for this though I'll just play, uh, let's do the uh, root octave, flat seven, and fifth of all the chords as they go past. So the whole thing, the whole form, sounds like this. Two, three. Vocals go in here. Two, three. That's four, halfway through. Two, three. Oh, my computer's freaking out. Two, three. And here we go into the four chords, we'll use this. You might even double those notes, so you might go... And then back to the riff. Like that, and we go go around and around and around again. Couldn't be simpler. By the way, if you wanted the notation and tabs and practice tracks that I'm using in this video, so you can practice these for yourself, just click the first link in the description of this video, and I'll send it to you all for free. Uh, next up, though, is an absolute classic riff that you can hear on songs like John Lee Hooker's Boom Boom. Uh, now, this one we can do in the people's key of E, and it's a little bit different than the last one because it actually follows the chords for the whole blues form. So that one's going to sound like this. Now this one's starting on beat two, and there's a similar kind of call and response uh, as the last example. Now in this case, uh, I think in the actual original recording, it's uh, vocals and guitar doing a thing, and then the band kind of responds uh, with this kind of idea. One, two, three, four, one. Just like that, right? So a call, two, three, four, one. 
and that's the response. So on every chord, we're just playing three notes. Uh, on the first chord, the E chord, we're playing open E, G, and A. So open E, third fret, and fifth fret on the E string, and then back to the open E. Uh, you can also add in uh, the G again on the way back down if you want. You can go, that works too. But you can keep it just a quarter notes if you want. Either is gonna work really well. Uh, for the A chord, we do the exact same thing, either starting on the open A, or on the fifth fret of the E string. Either is gonna be fine again. And for the final chord, uh, the exact same idea, just starting on a B. So, so B, D, E, B, or you can play it down here. And either is gonna work as well uh, down there. So all together, we'll put it uh, put it together, and it's gonna sound like this. So one, two, three, four, one. Dun, 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 one. Two, three, four, 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 one. Two, three, and that's it right there. Um, again, all these you can also do, put in that extra note on the way back down, uh, but either is gonna work. Now you do have to be a little bit careful with this one, uh, especially with the original John Lee Hooker recording. It's not actually a typical 12 bar blues form the whole time. There are a few curveballs, uh, but I'll put a link to you know this song and all the other songs in the description so you can check them out for yourself. Okay, blues riff number three is almost a cliche uh, these days because it's just been used so much, been used a ton by everyone, uh, but it's only become a cliche because it works so well. You can hear it in songs like Help Me by Sonny Bill Williamson, and of course Green Onions from Booker T and the MGs, uh, and that's, you know, that's the one we'll be using today, and it'll sound like this. For this one, we're in the key of F, and we're actually actually using a really similar idea from the last riff, the one, flat third, and fourth on every chord, but it's less call and response and more of a kind of constant thing. So over our uh, F chord, we're just playing F, F, A flat, B flat. So first, third fret on the E string, then first fret on the A string, all just in quarter notes. Just like that. Um, we get the same exact thing starting on uh, a B flat for the next chord. So B flat, B flat, D flat, E flat. So first fret on the A string, third fret on the A string, first fret on the D string. Before we go back down uh, to our F. And finally for our turnaround, we'll play C, C, E flat, F. So third and sixth fret on the A string and then third fret on the D string. Then back down to our B flat idea, and then back down to the F. Yeah, so put it all together on the 12 bar blues form, it's gonna sound like this. So one, two, three, and. except without that, without that little mistake in there. <laughs> now this one, it kind of gets done to death uh, but with a couple of variations. The first one is uh, just playing it over two bars rather than a single bar. So if you know ZZ Top's Lagrange, you've heard this idea. It's in A rather than F, but it's the same kind of deal. Yeah, so root, flat third and fourth, right? You can even stretch it over four bars and that'll work as well. So check out uh, Canned Heat playing on the road again. They stretch this idea out over four bars and play the little walk-up part in the third bar. It actually sounds like this. A one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, two, three, and bar. Yeah, like I said, it's a super common idea. Sounds really cool, works really well. The next riff is one that you can't quite use in as many places as the others uh, because it's kind of specific to this song. The other ones you can kind of get away with, you know, mixing and matching all that stuff. But this one, it was just too cool to leave out. Now this is Albert King's Born Under a Bad Sign and it sounds like this. There's only a few ideas through this whole song. The first one at the very start uses this super convenient little box here, this little... Yeah, F sharp, G sharp, B, C sharp, E, all frets just two, four, two, four, two. Yeah, so that's the first part. So with the track, it's gonna sound like this. Yeah, 
that's our first little idea. So F sharp, G sharp, B, C sharp, E. Two, four, two, four, two, four. Yeah. And the second part starts the same way. Just the first three notes before jumping from this B down to the open E string. And it just alternates between those two ideas. That's the first one. That's the second one. Yeah. Um, it just kind of alternates between those two uh, ideas. I guess you'd call that the chorus line. Uh, there's also the turnaround, which sounds like this. We go one, two. Yeah, so you're starting on your low F, first fret on the E string, and then going up chromatically, just fret by fret, until you get to the G sharp on the fourth fret, and then you're playing four of those. And uh, then we're going down to this little figure. Da, 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 da. So we get F, and then we get, sorry, F sharp, then F sharp, G sharp, E, F sharp. That's frets two, four, open two, and then from there, it's back to the main riff from before. Now, the only other idea uh, is in the verses, which is almost like a simplified version of what we had before. We get this. that same second and fourth fret box so we get C sharp F sharp G sharp B B C sharp so four two four two two four and then we go back into the earlier riff uh, when we do get to the chorus so with the whole thing it'll sound something like this just like that. Super, super, super sick bass line. And if you get stuck and you're not sure which one you're supposed to be playing, just follow the guitarist. If you check out the, uh, the original recording, uh, the bass and the rhythm guitar, they're playing pretty much the same thing uh, a lot of the time. Finally, we're going to get a touch more rockish. Uh, this one is the classic riff from the Cream version of Crossroads. Now, obviously, the original was by blues guitar legend uh, Robert Johnson, but the Cream version has a riff in it that you can use and a lot of kind of straight eighths blues. Uh, now, the actual bass line on the original recording, it's super, super busy and super intense. There's a lot to it. So I'll be giving just a, an incredibly simplified version, but definitely check out what Jack Bruce plays. It's very improvisational, very conversational. There's tons of variation. It's super cool. However, if you're not ready for, you know, the Jack Bruce level bass line, you can definitely play the main riff and that will get you through the song. And if you're going to do that, it's going to look like this. We're in the key of A for this one. And to start off with on our first uh, idea, we're going to play roots, octaves, flat sevenths. Yeah, so we're going to play A's, A's up high and then G. So we've got fifth fret on the A string, seventh fret on the D string, and then fifth fret on the D string. Uh, so the idea at the start sounds like this. So A A G A G A A. Oh, I can't say that. Say it that fast. <laughs> That's the kind of uh, the crux of our idea. And to finish out that phrase, we're going to go down to either this uh, low C on the E string on the eighth fret, or you could also do it at the third fret uh, of the A, uh, of the A string right there. Uh, either is going to work. Whichever, if you want to like kind of stay in position kind of doing that, or you can go, that works as well. Either is going to be totally fine, right? So next we take nearly the exact same idea and play it over the D chord. Uh, the only difference uh, is going to be the very last note of the phrase. So we get this, yeah, that's going to be exactly the same as what we, what we played on our, uh, starting on our E string. But the very last note, instead of playing kind of, 
down there. We'll just play an A. It's going to be a lot easier. Uh, like I said, this is very different from the Jack Bruce uh, one, but this will get you through. Uh, so we'll stick to playing over the D chords. Uh, and then we go back to, obviously, the A chord right there. Uh, and we just keep following, uh, following the kind of phrases through there. We play the same exact idea when we get to the E chord on the, on the turnaround. And then back to our A idea. So really the only time we're playing the, the kind of flat third idea is when we're playing over the A chord. So if we play through the whole form, it might sound something like this. One, two, three, four. Oh, actually, no, I correct myself. Uh, it goes to the four chord on the second bar. It's like a quick change uh, blues. One, two, three, four. like that. Like I said, the original uh, is much more intense and much more in-depth and way beyond the scope of just this singular video, but you can bust out this line when you need to do it and you'll be good to go. Now, if you are looking to head to a blues jam session soon and try out these riffs, I definitely recommend you give them a practice beforehand. And to make that as easy as possible, I'm giving the tabs, notation, and practice tracks away from this video for free. Um, that way, when the time comes, you'll be 100% prepared to you know, jump in and have a great jam session. So to get everything from this lesson, just click right here, fill out the form on that page, and I'll send you all the tabs and tracks so you can start practicing today. I'll see you in there.